تسليمي على سيدنا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ورضي الله عن أصحابه أجمعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته There was, there was a miscalculation on our part, so I apologize for that, for being late. قال الإمام الطحاوي رحمه الله تعالى وإن القرآن كلام الله منه بدا بلا كيفية قولا وأنزله على رسوله وحيا وصدقه المؤمنون على ذلك حقا now we're moving into the chapter of the Qur'an. Al-Qur'an al-Kareem. The translation here is erroneous. Again, it says that the Qur'an is the word of Allah. Scratch out word and say kalam. Put kalam. Al-Qur'an kalamullah. Naam? Kalamullah. Yani kalamullah ta'ala the ulama of Ahl sunnah they attribute Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi annahu mutakallim jala jalalu. Yani anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is attributed with kalam. What does that mean? Remember yesterday we, or the day before we were talking about We were talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. Said five things, first of all. I mean, there's many things, but let's go over the five. Allah's attributes are eternal with no beginning. We will recite, I will recite the Fatiha and we'll finish once we, you know, Bismillah, yes. Everlasting with no end and? But not only Sheikh Ismail. Now. The people who have been coming, not created, not similar to the creation. You think we should take the day off because everybody is tired today? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? We should? No. Fine. Then liven up. Eternal with no beginning. Everlasting with no end. Not created. Not similar to the creation. Not subject to The same people are repeating them again. I'd like to hear from more people participating. Eternal with no beginning. Everlasting with no end. Not created. So when we say Allah is attributed with kalam, speech, his speech is eternal with no beginning, everlasting, yes, that's 
these are the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we talk about his kalam subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say Al-Quran Al-Kareem, Kalam Allah. But Kalam Allah is not created, yes? Cannot be created. It's Kalam. Anything about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not created. Not similar to the creation. But then you read the Kalam the, in the Arabic language. We have the Quran right there. It's in the Arabic language. Are alphabets created? Languages, are they created? Is the Arabic language created? Because everything is a creation, but Allah is the creator. Yes? But when we say Al-Quran or Kalam Allah, we say it's not created. In the sense that it is the Kalam of Allah. So what do we have here? Yani we have many Hafaz of the Quran. Yes? They memorize the whole book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts. Does that mean the non-created dwells in the created? Huh? Okay. So the best way I like to say is simply that let's remember that alphabets Languages, alphabets, sounds, all these things are creation. If we say Allah, His attributes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, we say it's not, they're not created. And we stop there. I don't like to delve more into the kalami aspect of it, but if those of you who want to seek more sort of intellectualized things, as many of the ulama of kalam want to say that, If Allah's kalam is يعني what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to tell us if it's expressed the meaning thereof expressed the meaning thereof expressed in Hebrew it is the Torah expressed in Assyrian it is the Bible or the Injil expressed in Arabic, it is the Qur'an. So they want to say it is an expression of the eternal kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than it being eternal itself because alif, lam, meem itself, the letter alif, the alphabet meem, the alphabet lam, those are created. But Kalam Allah is not created. But we cannot capacitate that Kalam Allah Ta'ala. No, we can't. So what happens? So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala willed for His will to be expressed, for His Kalam to be expressed in a certain way that is not the make of Jibreel nor the make of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that was the expression of the Kalam or the expression of the Kalam of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Okay. Yet when we say that, when we say Al-Quran, we say Kalamullah. Is Kalamullah makhluq? Is Kalamullah created? No. Because it's an attribute of Allah, then attributes of Allah are not created. What does that mean? Yani when we say Al-Quran, Al-Kareem says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Innama amruhu idha arada shay'an ay yaqula lahu which means what does the ayah mean? If Allah wills for something, He orders it, commands it. Kun, Be, and it will be. Yes. I don't want you to think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kalam is kaf and noon. Kun. Kaf and noon are creation, they're alphabets. It's an expression of whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is will that he orders the things to have to the universe to be. But is that Al-Quran Al-Kareem then, as Allah says for Al-Quran Al-Kareem, Allah called Kalam Allah, 
and the book the Quran Kareem Kitab Allah Ta'ala just like we say the masjid is Baytullah yes the masjid is the house of Allah yeah is does do houses house Allah what do we mean by that tashrif of the house honoring of the of the masjid that the masjid is honored it is the house of Allah I mean the house where Allah is worshipped and glorified hmm? okay yes hmm. very nice وكلم الله موسى تكليما. يعني please again I always encourage you to be critical and ask. الآية is known, which means directly or literally it would mean Allah spoke to موسى. Verily Allah spoke to موسى. كلم الله موسى تكليما. We take the Quran as the Quran says. Yeah. So, two things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa. Yani, in a way, Musa alayhi salam understood the khitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without how? Without how? Without a modality. Or, qawl imam Abu Mansur, qawl imam al-Nasafi rahimahullah, that Allah created a sound that talked to Musa. And then you say, how can then does the kalam of Allah, our kalam, our speech is attributed with alphabets, languages and sounds. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not attributed with the attributes of the creation. So how so? Then we say again, these things are in the knowledge of Allah. But some of the ulama, as you know, men want to say that obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a sound that spoke to Musa alayhi salam. That sound was nothing else, no other creation. It was a sound by the will of Allah that spoke to Musa alayhi salam, expressing the uh, eternal, everlasting, none created, not similar to the creation, not subject to change, kalam of Allah. Yeah? Just like the hadith that talk about when at the end of night comes, nada munadin, a caller will call. Who is seeking forgiveness so I can forgive him? The hadith already tells you a caller will call, not Allah. Yani Allah orders a caller to call amongst the people of heavens and the people of earth. Whoever seeks forgiveness, so I can forgive him now. Not he, the caller, Allah will forgive him. But so we can, so a sunnah brings things closer to our mind on the basis of nothing is like him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? No. No. Hmm. It's a technical issue. If we say kalam is an attribute of Allah, we say it's not created. If we say the, alpha, the Quran, which is in the alpha, alpha Arabic alphabets, that is created. Yani what's between these two cartons, that's created in the sense of being in language and written. But if we say the attribute of Allah, his kalam, is not created. So then what is this creation? It is an expression of the non-created. In the created medium. So in that sense, Jibreel would be like Hafiz of the Quran in that sense, yani. Right? And the Hafiz of the Quran also keeps the Quran in his heart. 
But the Quran, if we're saying the Quran is being uncreated or non-created, obviously the non-created does not dwell in the created. Because it's an impossibility, obviously. Okay? But if we say, Al-Quran, Kalamullah, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for that book of His to be expressed in a created medium so the creation can actually memorize it and have it within them through a medium of alphabets and it must be uttered through mediums of voices and sounds then that is all a creation so that lafz of the Quran that you do that is makhluq obviously right contrary to some of the under some of the older understandings and obviously the language is makhluq because no one can to say that your utterance of the Qur'an is not created, is khaliq. Either khaliq or makhluq. That means the khaliq dwells in the makhluq. And then we are in bigger issues here. If we say Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem as the book, Kitabullah Ta'ala Ghayru Makhluq, this is sahih, absolute. No problem. If we say the alphabets is makhluq, is ghayr makhluq, that means the alphabet is khaliq, and that's obviously not, un obviously not only untrue, it's a, serious, it's a serious violation, right? Because you're saying that an attribute of the creation now is an attribute of the creator. Hmm? So again, I, yani unless you have this issue is really problematic to you, the best is to say, look, Kalamullah Kalamullah Ta'ala ghair makhluq. Al-Quran, Kalamullah. فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ غَيْرْ مَخْلُوقِ لكن the writing of the Qur'an and our uttering of it and the language which is in, in which it is uttered in, it's مخلوق. مخلوق لكن, again, الإمام, let's go to Imam, Imam Bukhari says وَأَنزَلَهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ وَحْيَا أو رواية وَأَنزَلَهُ عَلَى نَبِيِّهِ وَحْيَا وَصَدَّقَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ حَقَّا First, Let's again go back to the point that Imam Tahawi makes. وَإِنَّ الْقُرْآنَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بَدَأَ مِنْهُ بَدَأَ بِلَا كَيْفِيَّةٍ قَوْلًا It is from him, it came from him without how. We go back to how. What does how mean? Modality, mechanism. We have to understand one thing, and those of us who have been following Tawheed, please understand that. Modality and mechanism is only applicable to the creation. How do I speak? Because I'm a creation. How do I see? Because I'm a creation. How do I hear? Because I'm a creation. Modality and mechanism. How is inapplicable to the Creator. Appl putting it to Him means you're likening Him to His creation. So, Al-Quran Al-Kareem, Kalamullah. From Him. How? How is for me and you? Is it alphabets? No. Sounds? No. Languages? No. Letters? No. How? No how. But we know it's not like the creation. We know it cannot be like the creation. The creation is in alphabets and languages and sounds and voices. That is inapplicable to the Creator because He already said, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ He already said, لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفْوًا أَحَدٍ But, how? Inapplicable. Not, I don't know the how. No. If you say, I don't know the how, that's dangerous. Why? Because you're affirming a how and negating your knowledge of it. Very dangerous. And that's how you see some of the groups unfortunately fall into that. When they say there is a how, we just don't know that al istiwa ma'loom wal kayf majhul. For example, we'll come to that. Rather, kayf, what do you mean kayf? Man alladhi kayyaf Allah. Who is the one who gave him the how? No how. How is for me and you? 
For the creation, there is a hell. For Allah, there is no hell. Inapplicable to him. It's a contradiction in terms. It's like saying creator but created. No. Either creator or the created. There's not, two cannot be combined. Yes? قال الإمام الطحاوي رحمه الله تعالى وأنزله على نبيه وحيا This Quran was revealed on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم through wahi and wahi has many meanings I don't want to spend too much time talking about it because it's secondary issue لكن wahi has many meanings primarily obviously through Jibreel عليه السلام to the Anbiya عليهم وعلى آلهم أفضل الصلاة وزد السلام طيب وَصَدَّقَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكَ حَقَّا And the believers testified to it as the absolute truth that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَيْقَنُوا أَنَّهُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ بِالْحَقِيقَةِ They believe, يعني the believers believe that the Qur'an is the true kalam of Allah. Again, this word... Not really good. The best interpretation is what? When it has to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best interpretation is no interpretation. Islam is istislam. Submit. Once you interpret, you assign a specific meaning. You don't know if that's the meaning Allah willed or not. And they call tafwid. Submission. So the best interpretation is no interpretation. But on the basis of what? On the basis nothing is like him. Lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad. Allahu ahad. Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. On that basis. On the on the firm basis. But then what does he mean by it? Subhanahu wa taala. Allah jalla jalalu who knows best. Now. So. We believe, then the believers believe that the Qur'an is a true kalam of Allah. It is not created as in the speech of human beings. Yani the kalam being the attribute of Allah. If Allah is attributed with kalam like he's attributed, for example, with hearing and sight, as an attribute, it is not similar to the creation. Then, therefore, it is not created. Yes? It's eternal, everlasting, not created, not similar to change. Etc., etc. Yes? Okay. فَمَنْ سَمِعَهُ Imam Tahawi says, لَيْسَ بِمَخْلُوقٍ كَكَلَامِ الْبَرِيَّةِ It is not created like the kalam of the human beings. فَمَنْ سَمِعَهُ فَزَعَمَ أَنَّهُ كَلَامُ الْبَشَرِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ Whoever hears the Qur'an and say this is the kalam of the human beings, then فَقَدْ كَفَرْ He have rendered himself out of Islam. كَلَامُ اللَّهِ Al-Qur'an says, وَإِنَا حَدُوا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ سَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ Allah says his kalam, we say his kalam. Yeah? Okay. وَقَدْ ذَمَّهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَعَابَهُ وَأَوْعَدَهُ عَذَابَهُ أو رواية وَأَوْعَدَهُ without عَذَابَهُ For those of you who are looking for different versions of the narrations of the text فَمَنْ سَمِعَهُ فَزَعَمَ أَنَّهُ كَلَامُ الْبَشَرِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ وَقَدْ ذَمَّهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَعَابَهُ وَأَوْعَدَهُ عَذَابَهُ حَيْثُ قَالَتْ سَأُصْلِيهِ سَقَرْ When Allah says in the Qur'an, سَأُصْلِيهِ سَقَرْ which means, I will punish him with سَقَرْ فَلَمَّا أَوْعَدَ اللَّهُ سَقَرْ لِمَنْ قَالَ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا قَوْلُ الْبَشَرْ Whom Allah promised سَقَرْ For those who said about the Qur'an, it is قَوْلُ الْبَشَرْ It is from the Bashar. Naam? Allah says, Kalam Allah, Tanzilum min Rabbil Alameen. Not Kalam al Bashar. Therefore, he says, Alimna, Annahu Kawlu Khaliqil Bashar, Wala Yushbihu Kawla al Bashar. We 
testify. We know and firmly believe that the Quran is the kalam of the creator of mankind and is not similar to the kalam of mankind. Is that clear? Yes? Again, distinguishing the creator from the creation, subhanahu, from the creator, from the creation, subhanahu. So from the creation. Now, Imam Tahawi then he says something again that's underline it as many times as you can, million times if you can underline it, engrave it in your heart. He says, "Woman وصف الله تعالى بمعنى من معاني البشر فقد كفر." Whoever attributes Allah with even one attribute of the human being becomes a blasphemer. Yeah? Underline, and the evidence for this is Dalil, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, laysa ka mithlihi shay. Wa huwa as-sameer al-basir. Nothing is like him. Bashar, nothing is like him. Hal ta'lam lahu samiyya? Do you know anything similar to him? Lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad. Nothing is equal to him. Nothing is comparable to him. Nothing, 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 nothing. No imaginations, no delusions, no thoughts. Nothing can com- conceive him. Nothing can encompass him. Whoever attributes Allah with even one attribute of the creation is rendered out of Islam. Spaces, places, times, directions. All is his creation. Yes. There is to be able to compare. You have to be. You have to have a, f- a common basis of comparison. There is no comparison between the Creator and the creation. But now you say, what do you mean? Allah says about him, Ar-Rahim, and he also ascribes his beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ And then, Ra'ufun Rahim. اتَّحَدَ الْإِسْمُ دُونَ الْمُسَمَّى الْإِسْم, the naming may be the same, but what the name entails is absolutely different. Incomparable. It is incomparable. Why incomparable? The rahmah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is a creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, though being the best of the creation, but he is a creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His rahmah is not eternal with no beginning, not everlasting with no end, is created, is similar to the creation, though the highest of the creation, and is subject to change because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from perfection to a higher perfection. From perfection to, from absolute perfection to a higher absolute perfection. And from a higher absolute to a higher absolute. Not from uh, good to better, from best to best to best to best. Yeah? No comparison. No comparison of the creator to the creation, absolutely, whatsoever. In any way, shape, or form, there is absolutely no comparison. Because comparison means there is something to compare and there isn't anything to compare. Who Allah? Who Allah? Why does he tell you who Allah? Who Allah? Who? No one else. In no way. In no shape. Of understanding. Who Allah? Alladhi la ilaha. Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabba. All these, all these issues, Al-Quran, one third of it came about Tawheed. Who Allah? Yes? No. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah. 
No. Just like I mentioned to him, there is this mawdu hadith that some, some of the people use, some Sufiya also use, which, uh, uh, you, know, um, you know, again, I think it's mawdu, تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ اللَّهِ Obviously, there is no such thing. Number one, الخلق, what, what, what has is been created within you, تَخَلَّقْتَ بِهِ تَطَبَّعْتَ بِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is higher than being attributed with something like, who would habituate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything? Allah has attributes. Yeah? He has attributes. Now, Allah ordered you to be merciful. He is the most merciful. I say the most merciful, or Al Quran said, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, because it's something we can understand. But if He described Himself in a way we cannot understand, then the Quran would not be useful to us. He tells you He is Ar Rahman. And he tells you, Lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad. Be careful, huh? So understand from Ar Rahman that he is attributed with the mubalagha, the most exaggerative form of compassion that is inconceivable to the creation. But you understand it means compassion, but you don't understand the magnitude or what it is or how it is, for there is no how to it. It is the attribute of the Creator. My compassion, your compassion is created, is beginning, is got an end, it changes, it's similar to the creation, it's not like the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in any way. The language is a tool, it's so you can connect to understand. Because there ha you have to know, you have to know enough to worship Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot encompass Him, but you know enough to worship Him. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ they cannot have encompassing, but they know him enough. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Those who know. There is a way to know, but there is no way you can encompass. So how do I know Allah is compassionate? Well, he told me he is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So I stop there. How is he Ar-Rahman? Well, he says, رَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ My Rahma or my compassion overwhelms and overcomes everything. That's one of the ways to understand. Yeah? That's it. But our rahma, our compassion to each other is different. It varies. Sometimes there's no rahma. Huh? Unfortunately, if we practice compassion, <laughs> we would be in much different place today. Muslims became the role model of the dunya when they are, where compassion was central in their practice, not in their talk. Today, when people talk to us about Islam, we give them all the pamphlets, says, what, you don't understand? Islam is rahmah, deen of mercy. Here, read. Read. You know, here is the, give him the Quran, akhi. let him read. But they don't want to read, they want to see compassion in action. They don't want your words, they want your actions. Huh? Because actions speak, no, actions speak louder than words. It's easy to say we are the people of the deen of Rahmah, and our Lord is a Lord of Rahmah, and our Rasul is a Rasul of Rahmah, and our Quran is a book of Rahmah. But when there's no Rahmah in what we do, yeah, there has to be compassion. No. Now, this is true. Now, this is like the Sheikh said, it's an authentic hadith. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that, قالوا, لي, قال, لن يدخل الجنة أحد بعمله. قالوا, ولا أنت يا رسول الله. قال, إلا أن يتغمدني الله برحمته. يعني, we enter the Jannah by the mercy of Allah جل جلاله. Not because our deeds were worthy. Huh? Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would treat us justly, we would all end up in Jahannam. Eh? Just. But remember in the text of the Tahawiyah we talked earlier, وَكُلُّهُمْ يَتَقَلَّبُونَ فِي 
مشيئته بين فضله وعدله الله أكبر Look at this The creation All the human beings are swinging In the mashia of Allah Between his generosity and justice What does that mean? Yani if he treats you justly, he will bring all these ni'mas he gave you and all these endowments he gave you and how you misused them all. Like that man who worshipped Allah, the hadith that says that man worshipped Allah for so many hundred years, whatever it is, 500 years, from Bani Israel. Where he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go uh, on his prostration, sujood. So Allah took him in prostration. He never sinned. So he goes to the Day of Judgment and the Malaika, they put the, the, he has the scale, everything, 500 years of good things. No, no sins. So Allah tells the Malaika, orders the Malaika, take him to Jannah with my mercy. He says, Ya Allah, with my deeds, you know, I, you know, I've not done anything. Not done anything, not done anything. Now, okay, with your deeds, put Put the ni'mah of basar, ni'mah of hearing, ni'mah of sight, or all these ni'mahs, and see if he was thankful enough for those ni'mahs. Then it seemed like when what happened is, now he's not thankful enough, no matter what you do. Al-Habib al-A'zam wal-Rasool al-Akram, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Sayyida Aisha narrates the hadith. You all know the hadith. Rawa al-Mughira wa rawa tu Sayyida Aisha. Rawa tu Sayyida Aisha ajmal. Because afala uhibbu, there's uhib. Huh? And what said Aisha? She says she sees Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam at night. Subdiqa is looking, huh? Observing. That's why she's faqiha. Why do we say she is faqiha? Huh? He comes from the masjid, from the people, from the ibadah outside. He comes home. He turns the home into a masjid. The whole night he's in Qiyam until his feet were swallowed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She says, Ya Rasulullah, and she's his wife and she's trying to be compassionate with him. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why? He says, Afala uhibbu. So this is the shukr of the ni'mah. So that man, he says, my deeds bi amali, amala, tfadl. Huh? Bismillah. With your deeds, man, you're not thankful enough. Huh? How can you wa in ta'uddu ni'mat Allah? Can you count it? La tuhsuha. Then no matter how much you count, you cannot count. Therefore, you'll always fall short of thanking Allah for some ni'mas that you don't. And you'll fall short in thanking, period, because you don't thank enough. So take him to Jahannam with my justice. He says, Ya Allah, I go to Jannah with your mercy. That's the meaning. Now, we don't want to take too much because we, I want to stay on the text because we have to fa fasten your seatbelts. The text is still long and we have to really go fast. Now, قال الإمام الطحاوي رحمه الله تعالى وَمَنْ وَصَفَ اللَّهَ بِمَعْنَى مِنْ مَعَانِ الْبَشَرِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ Whoever attributes Allah with one meaning of the creation becomes kafir. وَلَيَذُ بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَى يعني لا تقول يا ذو بالله الله resides in a place الله resides in the seventh heaven above the seventh heaven sixth heaven كرسي whatever it is all these things directions up and down goes and comes light veils all these things are essence of كفري كفري beliefs Allah is the creator of places and the creator of spaces and the creator of directions and the creator of times. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala existed eternally when nothing else existed. No space and no place and no time and no creation and no galaxies and no moons and no suns and nothing. There was nothing but Allah who al awwal and there was nothing. Al-awwal means there is no beginning to his, begin, to his, to his existence. Huh? There is no beginning to his existence because beginning is a measurement of time and he is the creator of time, subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Hmm? He is the creator of time. Time does not subjugate him, but Allah subjugates time. Space does not subjugate him, but he subjugates space. وَمَنْ وَصَفَ اللَّهَ بِمَعْنًا مِنْ مَعَانِ الْبَشَرِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ قال الإمام الطحاوي رحمه الله فَمَنْ أَبْصَرَ هَذَا اَعْتَبَرْ Anyone who's, who grasps this should take note of it. Imam Tahawi is saying, no? 229 of Hijrah. Anyone who understands this, take note of it. فَمَنْ أَبْصَرَ هَذَا اَعْتَبَرْ وَعَنْ مِثْلِ قَوْلِ الْكُفَّارِ زجر. And anyone who takes grasp, grasp of this should refrain from saying things that the unbelievers in Allah say. الْكُفَّارِ نعم. وعلم أن الله تعالى بصفاته ليس كالبشر أو علم أنه بصفاته ليس كالبشر two narrations yeah. and then rest or they know that he سبحانه وتعالى with his attributes is none not like the human beings why he's the creator of the human beings is this clear very important. This separates the anthropomorphistic belief from the Tawheed that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to teach and the Anbiya before him came to teach. They came to teach people not to worship a, an imagined creation because whatever they imagine in their mind is a creation by definition. Al-Anbiya came to lead people to the Creator so they don't worship a creation. Not an idol they make in their mind nor an idol they make with their hands. Yeah? Al-Khaliq. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're done. Let's move on. Do we have time? How many? How much? 20 minutes. قال الإمام الطحاوي رحمه الله تعالى والرؤية حق لأهل الجنة بغير إحاطة ولا كيفية كما نطق به كتاب ربنا وجوه حيث قال وجوه يومئذ ناظرة إلى ربها ناظرة يا سلام الرؤية Ru'ya is the people of paradise, the vision for the people of paradise. Haq. Hmm? For the people of Jannah, there is a vision. That's haq. Because why? Allah said, وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ نَاظِرَةٌ Which means, what does that mean, Ya Mawlana? Mm. Faces that day would be radiant إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَةٌ Toward its Lord or to its Lord Sorry, I shouldn't use the word To its Lord, it's looking Now, this is a big topic for 10 minutes But, do we affirm the vision? No, we affirm the vision Why? There's hadith in Bukhari إِنَّكُمْ سَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ ها؟ كَمَا؟ أيوة أيوة ترون أيوة ترون القمر ليلة البدر You shall see your Lord Now تفضل Things in the Quran and in the authentic 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 sunnah that are incomprehensible to us, what's the best way to assign them a specific meaning or to submit them to Allah? Al-ru'yatu haqq. But look what At-Tahawi says. بِغَيْرِ إِحَاطَةٍ وَلَا كَيْفِيَّةٍ Without encompassing, nor there is a how. 
What does that mean? So you will see. Then what does it mean without like the creation? Because you see the creation, there's a distance. There's a reflection. So the way I see you, it's reflected the other way around in the cornea and then through the lens all the way to the cornea. And there is distance. If you go far enough, I can't see you. And then also you're in a direction. I see you in a direction. You're limited to a direction. And then there's a shape for you. And there is a mass for you. Allah is not attributed with mass, nor shape, nor color, nor looks like us, nor light, nor darkness, nor distance, nor direction, nor reflection. Then how? There is no how. Vision? Vision. How? No how. Well, what do you mean by vision then? I don't know. Well, who knows? Once you get there, you'll know, inshallah. How is that for an answer? Huh? May Allah take us all there. Um, and that's what I say to the brothers. Yani, and the sisters as well. You know, especially to the brothers because they, they, made, they made Jannah about two things. Hur and Qusur. <laughs> Women and real estate. Qusur, yani palaces. They want to have big villas. And they want to have Hur. This is what Jannah is. Now all the time we talk about Jannah, we talk about three things. Women, real estate, and food. But these things are there, inshallah. Lakin, huh? to haq. You want to retake this or you want to be in the neighborhood of Muhammad and Rasulullah? We ought to stop imparting our dunya thinking to the akhirah. You want to fulfill things in the dunya, okay, go get married. Huh? Work in the akhirah. The best, of, imagine you are in the neighborhood of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. Now you go and visit Sayyidina, Salamu alayka ya Abu Bakr. Huh? What else do you want? I mean, 100 villas are not equal that one salam. You agree or not? Tayyip. Tayyip. You keep thinking about hur and qusur and food. Naam. Al-ru'ya tu haq. We ought to focus on things that are important and stop trying to impart or bring on our whatever remnant of things. Naam, tafadal. We will get there. Because he has a section specific to it. So I don't want to jump his words, inshallah. If you don't mind, no? Alhamdulillah. Now. Yani even the whole vision, akhi, many of the ulama want to talk about the vision. What does vision mean? Yani vision, obviously, Means we believe in vision, as Allah said, and as His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yeah? And I leave it as such. I do tafweed. Lakin, yani obviously seeing, and I talk to you on the phone, Salaam Alaikum, Mawlana Rukhnuddin, uh, one, two, three, four, do you see what I'm saying? I'm in the US and you're in South Africa, you don't see what I'm saying, but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah? So seeing, is not necessarily always with the vision of the eyes. It could be with the vision of the heart. Like, and I'm not saying this here. Huh? I am submitting that meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having said that, you see the Quran al-Kareem says that. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-fil. Alam, haven't you seen? Who? الخطاب to رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رسول الله haven't you seen the meaning of the ayah haven't you seen what Allah did to the people of the elephant when was رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم born but Allah says ألم ترى haven't you seen haven't we informed you and given you the knowledge of all that stuff ألم نعلمك ألم ها 
Haven't we taught you? Haven't we? This is how you can take that. Like, and again, I'm not saying that here. I know that means allocating something and we don't want to get out of the text. The best is the texts. Texts means what? Quran and authentic sunnah. Why? Because they're safe and saving. It's safe and they're saving. Literally. Stop. Allah said, huh? طبعاً المعتزلة went to another way. They say ناظرة ناظرة هير منتظرة. يعني what does that mean? They said ناظرة looking means also means awaiting. What does that mean? إني مرسلة بهدية ف يا سلام فناظرة بما يرجع المرسل. I am sending them a gift. بلقيس said. To who? For the people, for their people about Sulaiman. She said, I'm sending Sulaiman a gift. Well, she wanted to bribe Sulaiman first. And you can bribe him. He brings the whole throne. Huh? Like, and she says, Inni mursilatun bihadiyyatin. Fa? Nadira. Yani, I am waiting to see. I'm looking, I am waiting to see what their answer will be. Like in, again, this is assigning a specific meaning. And the best is not to assign. Ru'ya, ru'ya. Yeah? Done. Over. In a way that's suitable to the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not like the Creator will be in a place or, or, or that you will encompass the Creator. Never. لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار Vision, vision. What kind of vision? How? Know how. What kind? Allah knows best. Submission. You can confirm it will be clear. You will have a vision that is clear. Now, what, with clear, what kind of vision? I'm not saying. I'm just saying you will be comfortable. Just like because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it in the hadith of Sahih Muslim. He made it, he says, as yani, if the whole world, the whole people in the dunya, at night when the moon is in the middle of the night, you stand and see the moon in the middle of the night, in the middle of the month. All people in the dunya would be able to see, would be no problem. They don't have to crowd, they don't have to crowd up to see, do they? No. Okay, same. So no one would be, would have less. All the people of Jannah would have the bounty of Allah on them. Not one less in that sense. That's the meaning. It doesn't mean some people want to say that, yani that Allah looks like the moon for man yakul dalik, huh? No, it means like لا تضامون في رؤيته. You would not have a problem. What? Not one of you would be better than the other. You would all be the same. That's the meaning. نعم. والرؤية حق لأهل الجنة كما نطق بغير إحاطة ولا كيفية كما نطق به كتاب ربنا وجوه حيث قال أو without حيث قال depending on the version you like. Or on the riwayah, two riwayat, حيث قال وجوه يومئذ ناظرة إلى ربها ناظرة. Look at Imam Tahawi, وهذا مذهب السلف. This is the madhab of Salaf, رضي الله عنه. Salaf means what? نعم. Salaf means what? Predecessors. Is your father who passed away your salaf? No. Naam. Is your immediate grandfather salaf to you? Yes, he is. Like in, in a term now that we've invented. It's an invented term. Hmm? And no, it's not used in the Quran nor the Sunnah. In the Quran, it's only used one time about Al Fir'aun. Fajalnahum salafan. Wa mathalan. Like, and we invented this term. And that term, the invented term, as salaf indicates, according to those who invented it, either the first 300 years after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or the first 400, because there are some narrations that may indicate four, and some extended to the first 500. 
Now, in the first, you know, just that we have said that, in the first five, 500 years, let's say, do the Salaf have one madhab, yani one opinion in issues? There is nothing called that they have one madhab, one opinion. Because in, in usul, yani in matters of aqaid, they were the Shia, and the Shia, they had extremes among them, and they had more or less extreme and more moderate, and, the, and there was the Mu'tazila, and there was the Khawarij, and there was all these people lived in the Salaf. Where did they live? Lived in the Salaf, the era of that Salaf time. So we say, no, we mean by the Salaf, the people from Ahl Sunnah who participated to Ahl Sunnah, they were not Shia or Khawarij or Mu'tazila or so, that lived in those 500, first, first 500 years. But among those, there were people who also had differences and agreements. Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, Imam Abu Mansur al-Maturidi, the Hanafi ulama at that time, the Shafi ulama, al Hanabila at that time, we're still talking 200, 300 years, huh? Yani open up the book of a Sunnah by Ahmed, Abdullah bin Ahmed bin Hanbal, and you'll see all these various things. So it seems like every sect has its own Salaf. Wait, and I'll answer your question, inshallah. Everyone, they said, this is our Salaf. And therefore, the best Salaf is the Book of Allah. In that sense, yani, the best reference is the Book of Allah and the authentic Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which the Salaf themselves must adhere to. So I don't want you to think that the Salaf, while we respect them, the pious Salaf, we respect them and may Allah be pleased with them, that they constitute a standard. No. The standard is the book and the sunnah. Everyone else is judged against the standard. Yeah? And the Salaf did not have one opinion. Because you have the Hanbalis at that time, the offshoot of Hanbalis, they had different opinion. You had the Hanafis, you had the, the people of Kalam, you had the Sufis who started. You had so many people. So, the reason I'm saying this is because Obviously, we love everybody in the sense of compassion. We're compassionate to all Muslims, regardless of their backgrounds. No problem. But obviously, when a term is used in a misconception or a misconceived, misleading way, that the Salaf, radiallahu anhum, all were united, and this is what they said. You know, there is no such thing. Simply because there was, you may be collecting seven, eight people who lived in the Salaf time, that I can collect 70, 80 people who differed with them on that very same topic. But the Muslimin are united on the integrals of this deen. That there is no difference. Right? But other than that, the hadith fi Muslim, قالوا, ya, they came to Ali, عن, they said, Ya Ali, hal indakum kitab? Do you have any, any, any book, anything we follow? قال إلا كتاب الله just the book of Allah وفهم أعطيه مسلم and an understanding of a Muslim but the judge is the book of Allah so we because nowadays we all يعني many of people they seem to sort of يعني instead of focusing on bettering ourselves and this is not against any group or or sect or anybody يعني I always believe that the Muslim ummah as a whole is the ummah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and I start from there and inheriting the fikr and the hum of the ummah of an Nabi Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa in general with all its mosaic. Huh? With all its mosaic because there's good in everybody. There's good in everybody. And everybody of us who's fallible needs improvement. The infallibles don't need. If anybody of you is infallible, you don't need improvement. But I'm talking about myself. The fallible need improvement so we work better. And the standard is the book and the authentic sunnah. Done deal. Okay. So when I say madhab al-salaf, I don't mean that the salaf actually have a madhab per se. Because to the salaf, unity did not mean conformity. Like nowadays. If I agree with you 99.9% .9 and you disagree with me with 0 .9, 0 0.009, then oh, woe to you. You're gone. I'm going to close the door of Jannah after me. Make sure you don't come in. 
Alhamdulillah, Jannatullah is not your Jannah. Right? That. Unity does not necessarily mean conformity. Therefore, Imam Shafi'i radiallahu anhu, will Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu anhu, will Imam Malik radiallahu anhu, they differed. Abu Hassan and Abu Mansur, they differed. Sahaba themselves, they differed on some issues. No problem. Why? They were trying to follow the Quran and Sunnah. Are they infallible? No. So what do we do? We follow the Quran and Sunnah and we use their things in which they were right according to the book and the Sunnah and we make dua for them and we love them because they were close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and they've done the best they could. Dundee. No infallibility umbrella on anybody except the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah? So. But the Salaf in general were less talkative more action we are now more more talk less action yeah in the time in the old days there is more action less talk now we became masters of, of talk everyone is munadhar everyone master and everyone learns three booklets and becomes the supreme maulana one and only and anyone else is not the, as good huh? not like this no, I'm more done, I understand. Imam, Taha, Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Shafi'i, you look at their relations, yani after, after they passed away, etc., you see that appreciation, because those of knowledge appreciate knowledge, and those of ignorance don't appreciate knowledge.